So today, now I'm going to start on respiratory system short case examination. So this is an elderly gentleman, and I have been asked to do the respiratory system short case examination of this gentleman. Okay, right. So again, right side of the bed, I will gel my hand with alcohol. Okay. And uh, then I will introduce myself now to the patient. See ya, Mama Amazon was the wife. She said, We are put up a chakra and a yard. A pasta and a dead. So now, uh, the command given to me is exhibit this patient's respiratory system anterior anterior exhibition. So, what am I going to do? So, I'm going to start with the chest. So, I'll uh, because this is a teaching session. So, I'll go slowly because you need to grab everything. So, exhibition of the respiratory system anterior. First, you start with the chest. So, now see the difference. Cardiovascular system, we start with the hand. We look for peripheral stigma of endocarditis, wait for the pulse, JVP, head and neck, and then came to precordium. But now it's a reverse order. We are starting with the chest first. So, chest, these are the four components inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Cardiovascular system, inspection, palpation, and auscultation. There's no percussion for cardiovascular system, but respiratory system, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So four steps, right? So look here. So inspection, see, see my movements. Now first, I'm going to move to his foot end. Now this you have to do in the exam. So quickly go to the foot end of the patient, this is the foot end, right? Now go to the foot end and slightly bend down like this and see with his chest wall expansion is symmetrical. So you can see, now I'm at the foot end. And you can see his both sides of the chest are moving. But if you look very carefully, you will notice left side is moving more, but the right side, the movements are a little less. If you look very carefully, you will notice the left side is moving more, but the right side, some, like it's not very much, but there's a slight reduction of chest wall expansion on the right side. So that when you that you will notice only when you go to the foot tail. So at the foot tail, you will notice. Left side is moving more compared to the right side. So that is the first observation. Then next thing is at the foot end, we are also going to see the second feature at the foot end, that is whether he has got apical flattening. What is apex? What is ap apical area? So this is the clavicle. You can see the clavicle here. The clavicle. This is the other side clavicle. The area immediately below the clavicle that's called apical area. Now, in this, that's apex of the lung. So, in the apical area, normally you have a fullness. So, this gentleman is full. This side also is full. Now, if one has got, I will show you pictures of what is called apical flattening. So, one side is full like this, but the other side is just some flattening or some concavity. Then, that is called apical flattening. So apical flattening will not occur on both sides. One side it will be full, the other side it will be flat. So if you have flat upper part of the chest below the uh, clavicle, then you call it apical flattening. But, but then you must compare. One side is normal, then this is there's some fullness, the other side is flat, then you call it apical flattening. But this gentleman has not got any apical flattening. So number one, you look for when the chest wall expansion is symmetrical, it's not, right side is less moving compared to the left side, whether there's apical flattening. Then the third feature on this picture, I have given, I have posted the handout, the steps in examination. The third feature is you have to see uh, the respiratory rate and also when the patient got obvious chest wall deformities or cerebral scar. So respiratory rate, this is the way to count. So this is my uh, wristwatch on my left hand. So uh, I'm distracting the patient by holding his pulse. Why is that? Because if I look at his chest expansion and keep my wristwatch like this, patient is concentrating on that and his breathing rate might get faster. So to, to distract him, what I'm doing is I'm just putting my right hand on the pulse, but I'm not counting the pulse. I am looking at the chest expansion. See, on this here, chest expansion. 
So one, two, five. So like for 15 seconds, uh, I counted and came toward five. So five into four is 20. So its respiratory rate is around 20 per minute. Apart to the this year. So now I counted the respiratory. That's the third point. Fourth point. To see whether he has got any obvious chest fall deformities or surgical scar marks. Now, concentrate carefully. He has got a chest fall deformity. What is that? Now, look at this chest. Now, this is the lateral diameter. This is the antero posterior diameter. You can see the antero posterior diameter here from here to here. Antero posterior diameter is from here to here. It's quite a lot. Okay. If you can focus on the so antero posterior diameter is quite a lot. So anterior posterior diameter and the lateral diameter is almost the same. So this is the lateral diameter and this is the anterior posterior diameter. So this is what we call a barrel shaped chest wall deformity. This is a barrel shaped chest wall deformity. It's like a barrel. So it's called barrel shaped chest wall deformity. What are the other two deformities? Pictures excavator that is going inside. Now this is normal. Even you and I we have the same. Uh, 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 you know, just uh, appearance. Because excavator piece is getting buried inside, like funnel chest, and excavator piece is coming up. So he has got only barrel shaped chest wall deformity. What you get in COPD patients? That happens. Only COPD patients. Right. Then also you have to see when the patient got any surgical scar mark. So sometimes the patients would have got some on his lateral chest wall a surgical scar mark. What is that? Like if the patient has undergone pneumonectomy, that is part of the lung is removed, that's called pneumonectomy or lobectomy, then you will see a surgical scar mark on the lateral chest wall. Because it's going to the posterior aspect. It's going to the posterior aspect. So you have to see whether he has got surgical scar mark. One more thing is actually a postgraduate point. Also on this lateral chest wall, I this side or this side, see whether there's a scar, rounded scar. Why is that? If the patient has had an intercostal tube inserted, maybe due to a large pleural effusion, maybe due to pneumothorax, if you had a large IC tube inserted here and sometime back, then you will notice a scar on the lateral chest wall. So look for that scar as well. So that's all under inspection. So what are the components? You come to the foot tape, and see, uh, look for the chest wall expansion. You can again see, appreciate that this left side chest wall expansion is more compared to the right side. Look for any apical flattening, it's not there. Then count the respiratory rate. Then look for any obvious chest wall deformities or surgical scar marks. Inspection part is so. But you must learn to do this fast. Today I'm teaching, that's why it takes some time. Then the next thing is palpation. Under palpation, you are using your hands like this. Look at my hand. Flat of the hand. Your two thumbs should meet in the center. And I will make a skin fold also between my two thumbs. And the hand should be flat like this. Now, the three zones. Now, the lungs, we do, our chest, we divide into three zones. This is called the upper zone. This is called the mid zone around the nipple. And the lower part is called lower zone. So, upper zone, mid zone, and lower zone. Now, in this gentleman, this is the upper zone. This area is the upper zone. Around the nipple, this area is the middle zone. And here the lower down, you have the lower zone. Right. So now I'm going to be examined by using my hands for the palpation. Now see. Now putting my thumbs together, the thumb should thumb should meet in the center. Now see. My upper upper hands are on these clavicles like this. See the direction. Like this. And I will make a spin fold like this. Look at my hand. So my hands are covering this apex of uh, the upper zones of the lung. And there's a skin fold between my two thumbs. Now concentrate. 
each heartbeat. You can see my right hand and left hand, they move. So the left hand moves more compared to the right hand. Look at my, so this my, my wrist touch is on the left hand. And my uh, the string is on the uh, on my right hand, so my right hand is touching his left chest wall. See this one, this one, this one is moving more. The left side is moving more compared to the right side. So the, this side moves some. More. So which I saw earlier is been appreciated or reconfirmed by palpitation. That's the opposite. So what did I do? Keeping my hands together, the thumb should meet at the center and making a skin fold. And now you can see beautifully my uh, his left chest, that is my right hand, is moving more compared to my left hand, that is right chest. Right now, I'm going to do that on the middle zone. See, I'm going to grab this chest wall like this. See, I'm grabbing his chest wall. And the thumbs are meeting at the center with a skin fold like this. See the movement of my head. So I'm grabbing his chest walls around the nipple, and my thumbs are meeting at the center. See the movement. And again, you will notice my his left chest is moving more compared to the right chest. Left chest can be a huh? Patient left chest can be right hand. There we go. Now I'm going to do that on this. Yeah. Now I'm going to do it on the lower zone here. Lower zone is here. And again, you can beautifully appreciate my his left chest. That means my right hand is moving more compared to my left hand. That is his right chest. So you saw the skin fold. How I have made it in the center. Great, excellent. We have got an excellent cameraman today, a professional uh, cameraman. Amaru, this is your hands. Take a look at the Amaru. Put the hat here, like, and I will take So, patient became a little restless. We had to look after patients' well being also. Right. So, until he's comfortable, I'll just teach you something. So we did the inspection. Inspection uh, we look for of, uh, uh, chest wall expansion with the symmetrical apical flattening. Then we counted the respiratory rate. Uh, then we saw whether he got any obvious chest wall deformities or surgical scars. Then the second part was palpation. I palpated. I see ya. Hati the. Kya na mukda Ah, obi, obi. Then pass it? Yeah. Ah, obi. So these patients can become listening, particularly the respiratory patients. So upper zone, I have looked for palpation. The mid, so upper zone is here, the mid zones and the lower zones. So palpation part is zone. Now, when we were medical students, we used to do a method called vocal frame test. That is, you use the other board of the head like this and ask the patient to say 99, 99, 99 like this. But nowadays, uh, we are not really expecting students to do that vocal feminist is not necessary the reason is we are doing vocal resonance by using the stethoscope so you can skip the vocal feminist part no one is expecting you to do that but if you really want to do it it's perfectly all right to do it uh, the way to do that is you keep your other part of uh, of the head like this and ask patient say 99 again this side 99 this side 99 again 99 99, 99, like that, patient has to say. So, when the patient says 99, you can feel the vibration on your left hand. So, that's how you do the vocal fitness, but not necessary because we do that 99 thing with your stethoscope. That is called vocal resonance. Right. Next is percussion. Now, watch carefully. This is how we do the percussion. Now, this is the so This is the apex of the lung. This is the apex. So apex, I am going to focus by rolling my middle finger on this root of the neck, like this. Rolling my middle finger on this root of the neck, like this. And the percussion technique is like this. 
see the movement is only at the wrist, not at the elbow. If you do like this, that is wrong. Like this. Like that. Okay. So now I am going to roll my middle finger on this root of the leg like this and circus the apex of the lap. So you have the resonant note. And immediately, then you have to compare with the other side. See, I'm rolling my middle finger above this clavicle at the root of the leg. So same, both sides present and root, only two percussions. Then clavicle. Clavicle, you are not keeping your finger, but just tapping with your middle finger, tip only. You heard that nice resonant note. And then this side also. Resonant. So both sides, over the clavicle, when you do a single percussion, you heard the resonant note. Now I'm going to percuss this upper zone, mid zone, and the lower zone. So it should go like this, not straight down like this. And also I have to percuss this lateral chest wall. So like this, starting like this and going like this, and also lateral chest wall. Now remember guys, on the left side, you have the cardiac dullness around, the, around this area. You have cardiac dullness. And this area, you will have liver dullness. But if a patient has got COPD, you will have absent cardiac dullness and absent liver dullness. Let's see. So starting on the right side, below the clavicle. You heard that nice resonant note, and then immediately I'm comparing on the other side. So this is the way to keep your fingers. The middle finger is firmly attached to the chest wall, and the other fingers are slightly raised up. You see this position. So first, all four fingers are firmly attached to the chest wall. Then the middle finger remains in that position, but the other fingers are slightly lifted up, slightly lifted up. Now I'm going to tap the middle phalanx of middle finger with my right hand middle finger tip. Resonant note. You saw that? Resonant note. Resonant. <coughs> Excuse me. Then little low down. Resonant. Compared with the same level. Resonant. Then I'm going a little like this. Still resonant. Still resonant. Now I'm coming to the nipple. Now here, usually I should expect dullness. Now see. Now see this note. Listen very carefully with your earphones if you can. Resonant. Little dull, and listen now very carefully. That's called stony dull. Even dull, that's stony dull. L listen carefully again. Resonant, 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 little above the nipple, dull, stony dull, and stony dull. See, stony dull. So actually, he did not have the liver dullness. What he had was another pathology, a classical exam, the commonest short case you are going to get in your ERP exam, finally BBS exam, or any other respiratory short case examination. The commonest short case we dealt with. Right. Yeah, you get a stony dull condition. You guys know what condition causes stony dull condition, or that is your pleural effusion. I, I think today was one of your luckiest days, right? You heard how the sound was changing from resonance to dullness to stony dullness. So stony dull percussion note, you get in plural effusions. Right? That was a beautiful case. So again, now we have to compare the other side. Resonant. Still resonant. So see the left side. Still resonant. So you must say like that. Whenever the patient is in pain, you must say, I'm sorry. So you can see So you can see even this low down of the left chest is a bit resonant. 
The reason for that is he got some COPD as well. Because he got COPD, he got hyperacidic percussion group on the left chest, right to the bottom. So that is he got absent cardiac dullness. Absent cardiac dullness. So actually he did not have dullness due to the liver. It was due to a pleural effusion. Right. So now that is how we do the anterior chest percussion. You have to do two percussions on the lateral chest as well. Look at this. This is how you are going to do the lateral chest percussion. Look at this. So one little up and the other one low down. Now this side lateral. Lateral chest percussion. But let's see only. So that is done. See, this is resonant, dull, dull, actually that's stony dull, I'm sorry, dull, stony dull, because you know guys, plural effusion, it goes like this, it ascends upwards, so plural effusion goes like this, so that's why when I focus this lateral chest, even here, even here, I'm getting stony dull percussion group. It's purely stony dull. So lateral chest because plural effusions go up like that. So stony dull percussion no was So percussion part is so. Now comes to the last part that is auscultation. So using always the diaphragm of stethoscope. Uh, some videos like uh, I, I know in America they auscultate with the bill of the stethoscope, but in Sri Lanka, UK, Australia. You should examine diaphragm of telescope, and you guys in your exam, please go ahead with diaphragm of telescope. Right. So, what am I going to do in during auscultation? I'm going to auscultate either side and going to listen to the air entry or what you call breath sounds. Thanks. So, breath sounds, whether they are equal on either sides or whether there's a reduction of air entry in any area. So, uh, now what are the normal breath sounds? Normal breath sounds are called vesicular breath sounds. Vesicular breath sounds. So, I'll imitate that for you, like how I did for cardiac uh, uh, murmurs. So, this is the normal breath sounds, right? Listen to me carefully. So, inspiration, expiration, no gap in between. Inspiration is longer. Expression is short. Like that. <laughs> if there was Corona, I would have been all day. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's normal vesicular breathing. So bronchial breathing is different. What is bronchial breathing? That is, you have a gap between inspiration and expression. Now listen to me. <laughs> So blowing quality. So tonight you have an exercise, even in the middle of the night. What is that? You wear your stethoscope, put it on your ears like this, and you should know the direction of stethoscope. Like I mean, this when it's angling forward, that's the direction where you have to put on your ears, right? Not like this, right? Like this. So the diaphragm. So do this uh, exercise tonight. That is where your stethoscope, you can auscultate your own friend. Oh, sorry, your chest. You breathe in and out. That's what you hear is vesicular breathing. Then also, this stethoscope, you put on your trachea like this, here, yeah, like this. On the trachea. Keep it on your trachea and then breathe through your nose or even through your mouth. Right. So keep your diaphragm on the trachea. Yes, like this. And then breathe through your mouth. So the sound that you hear is very similar to bronchial breathing when you keep it on the trachea. So do that exercise. Then you get familiar with what is called bronchial breathing breath sound. 
but I'll show the same video source of that as well. So, and also I'll be teaching that. So, the quality of the breath sounds, which will be the that's vesicular, then bronchial, blowing quality. It's like blowing, and there's a gap in between. That's called bronchial breathing. So bronchial breathing, you hear only in three conditions. One is when you get uh, a consolidation, like a pneumonia. Second one is when you get fibrosis, not fibrosing alveolitis, but one localized area of fibrosis. And the third one is when you get bronchiectasis, that is in low down of the chest. So consolidation, fibrosis, and bronchiectasis. Those are three conditions where you will hear bronchial breathing. Then also, you will hear in patients with COPD and also bronchial asthma, a breath sound like this. So you saw inspiration, then expiration is longer, prolonged, and with a musical sound. Like that. So why is that? When you get bronchospasm, the bronchi is going into narrowing and it's like a whistling sound that you get. So that's why you hear this musical sound, uh, what you call asthmatic breath sounds. Right. Then also you have to concentrate on your auscultation because even in respiratory system, the most important part is auscultation. You have to see whether he's getting any adult sounds. What are the crackles, crepitations, that arch that we examine in cardiovascular system. Uh, now, in the cardiovascular system exhibition, we clearly heard crepitations, fine crepitations of heart failure. Fine crepitations of heart failure. So, you have to here look for the crepitations. You have to see whether there are cross post crepitations or fine crepitations. Right. So, this gentleman, I'll let me show you how to do the auscultation. So, compare similar levels, right, with the diaphragm. And you must tell the patient, uh, open your mouth and take deep breaths in and out. So left upper sword, right upper sword, normal air entry. Then no, nice, beautiful musical video. Like that. So left mid zone now and the right mid zone. Now, beautiful. Now, left mid zone, Usma Gamusia. So, when you see a abnormality, you have to double check that. So, I'm going to do that again now. Usma Gamusia. And then this side. Yeah, the right mid zone, the AI is less. Again, for the third time also, I'm reaching in there. Usma Gamusia. Yes, it's definitely less on the right mid zone. Now I'm going to put my stethoscope a little low down below the nipple. I can hear the heart sounds as well as I can hear a few crepitations in the left lower zone, fine crepitation, so he may be having some heart failure. Now I'm going to compare similar level on the right lower zone. No AI entry at all. Usma Ganda Balanda Haiye, look what it Arab Pitakaran. So there. So there's no AI entry at all. So whenever you see abnormality, you must double check that you must tell the patient do it again. So to reconfirm that. Usma Ganda. Yes, definitely is absent AIT. So the left lower zone, I had some. So this one, left lower zone, I heard some crepitations. That is maybe he said in some COPD and copalmonal element, heart failure element. But the right lower zone, there's no AIT at all. And I'm moving low down now. So it's purely absent AIT from the right mid zone. Right mid zone to right low zone, there's no air entry, absent air entry. 
beautiful physical sign. Beautifully telling in the physical sign. Reduce chest wall expansion on the right side. Uh, saw that during inspection at the foot tent. Confirmed that with palpation. On percussion, I got stony dull percussion note and on auscultation, absent near entry. Super case. The way I will see a case of plural effusion. Right. Now the last part, vocal resonance. See, I want to Anu name kela kia na? Kia na? Anu para? Anu para? With so? Anu name. Anu para? Anu Yes. So the students those who are here, they can hear that tomorrow. The Anu name here, 99. You can hear nice. Anu para kia? Anu name. Then kia? Anu Very nice. Here you will hear the 99 through the stethoscope, but on the right side, when you ask the patient to say 99 and keep the stethoscope here, there's no 99. 99 is coming from his mouth, but not through the stethoscope. So you actually has got absent vocal resonance. Absent vocal resonance. So because I'm doing 99 with the stethoscope, I don't have to keep my hands to look for vocal fremitus. So that's all for your anterior examination of the chest. So it's done. But it's not over. Why? You haven't done the relevant general examination. Now I am going to do the relevant general examination. And how am I going to do that? So starting with the head depth and going to the head to foot. Head depth to foot depth. Right. Now what do I notice? Uh, he was a little dyslexic earlier. Now of course he's a bit relaxed. Whether he's a cachectic patient. Now for, for heaven's sake, for thin patients, don't go and say cachectic. So, like, I mean, like, there are thin patients, but cachectic means you need to be really, really, really wasted. Right? So, this patient is of average build. Uh, and also, in the exam, when you are presenting, don't ever say patient is well looking. Well looking patients are not in the hospital. They, so, if, if a patient comes to the hospital, they are always ill looking. So, don't say well looking or ill looking. You don't get any mark for that. Please don't tell them. All right. So uh, he's of average build. He's not catching feet. So the first thing is appearance. Appearance means average build or uh, catching feet. He's average. Build. Then you have to see whether he's this knee. So how do you say this knee? Look at this uh, alienacy. Alienacy can be nostrils bigger. Alienacy whether there is any flaring. Flaring means you can see nostrils are moving to either side. Like if you look at my nose. So to, to each breath. That is flaring of failures. This movement of twice. So and the other feature of this is using accessory muscles of respiration that is sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid, whether he's using accessory muscles of respiration, sternocleidomastoid muscles. Then also, whether he's using uh, his intercostal muscles for breathing in exaggerated manner, then you get uh, between ribs, you get burying inside. That's called intercostal recession. It can be con con wagi hair and ribs are We have a melan area. So that is called intercostal recession and subcostal recession. He has got that. Then, guys. Uh, so that is when you see when the patient is distinct. So you saw when the patient is cachectic. Then you saw when the patient got any evidence of dyspnea. And now you are going to see when the patient is pale. Put a balance here. Pull down the congenital. Mildly pale. See upon the mask. Pull on the see it. Come on. Right. So he is not cyanosed. Hari, So look for whether he is pale and also whether he is cyanosed. So, guys. Can you have fellow and cyanosis together? Never ever. Please don't mention that in the exam. You will be failed then and there. If a patient is pale, you cannot have cyanosis. Why? 
for you to have cyanosis, you need to have certain amount of deoxygenated hemoglobin. So a pale patient cannot be cyanosed. And if a patient is cyanosed, you can't be pale. Right? So think of that carefully. Pale patient cannot be cyanosed. So don't ever say patient is pale, patient is cyanosed. It never happens. Then also in the respiratory system itself, you also have to look at the color of lips. When they have purple discoloration, that is due to polycythemia. Purplish discoloration, that's due to polycythemia. Right? Why COPD patients, you can have polycythemia. You can have cyanosis, so watch carefully. So COPD patients, watch carefully. Uh, look at their color of lips and also color of tongue. So this is how you look for cyanosis. So the way to look for uh, the undersurface of the tongue, in my note, I have clearly uh, mentioned that undersurface of the tongue, like this. Tell the patient to touch his uh, upper palate with your tongue. And the polycythemia you will notice in your lips. So in patients with COPD, this is very important why COPD patients they get secondary polycythemia and most of the patients with COPD, they are cyanosed. So look for that. Cyanosis is a mild bluish tinge that you will notice in the undersurface of the tongue. So look for that and polycythemia. So now we have finished everything in the head and neck, but remember in the respiratory system, you have to accept the lymph nodes also. You cannot examine the lymph nodes in the anterior position. You have to get the patient into seated position, go behind and examine. So we are not going to do that now. So now I am moving to his hands. So you bend down and see when the patient has got any clubbing. Not much of clubbing, maybe just grade one clubbing, not significant. Look for clubbing, no, not there. And now you are not going to look for split hemorrhages because sometimes students go and mix up CBS with RS. Don't do that. He has got some wasting of his, you know, uh, small muscles of the hand. You can see that wasting of the first dorsal introsial and also other dorsal introsial muscles. But that may not be related to the respiratory system. Here also you can see that wasting of the dorsal introsial muscles. The next thing is you have to palpate his wrist and see whether he is getting any tenderness. That is called hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. So when you palpate his wrist area, if he gets tenderness, that is at the end of long bones, you get a, something called a pulmonary osteoarthropathy that you get in conditions like bronchial carcinoma and also bronchiectasis. So you get tenderness at the wrist joint. That is called hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy, which he has not had that. He does not have that. Right. Next is, you have to ask, see ya, adding bottom, behemati agar, no, no. See ya, adding forward down, behemati agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, I'm looking for flapping tremors, very nice. Thank you, see ya, om ti agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, behemati agar, you are looking for flapping tremors. So if the hands, they go down like this, that is called flapping tremors, he has not got that. Why are you looking for flapping tremors? That is evidence of hypercarbia. In patients with COPD, you can get carbon dioxide retention and you can get hypercarbia and that can cause flapping tremors. Yes, it works. Then also, guys, now clues I am giving. In the respiratory system examination, also look at their forearm, this area. Why our man to test we usually do here? So we when we inject the uh, tubercule, we draw a circle like that. So you might notice a circle here. And if that whole circle is red color, that is due to positive mantu. So look for any mantu scars on the upper form. Now, this is not a mantu scar. These are bruises. These are what we call bruises. So where they have put intravenous cannula, the patient has got bruises. And these are bruises. These are not mantu scars. Right. So now we have done the hand examination. And finally, we move to the legs. Feet. Looking for pitting ankle edema. Within the neck, Akula. Yeah, he hasn't got any pitting edema. See, ah, a pitch would take the body with two then. 
Who are you going to do? Right. 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 This is how you do the leaf node exhibition. Hi. Put down the whole look in here. Put down the mask in the other one. So starting with the submental, submandibule, in the tonsillar nodes. Then this is the anterior border of sternocleidal vestal on this side. Anterior border of sternocleidal vestal. This is the anterior border of her pond. Melody, the Nama, Sama Vinda. Ah, Lia Padia. This is the anterior border of sternocleidal vestal on this side. So superficial cervical nodes will be here. Deep cervical nodes will be on the posterior border. This deep cervical nodes. And the supraclavicular nodes will be here. Supraclavicular nodes. And the occipital nodes. Occipital nodes will be here. That's how we are going to do, do the lymph node examination. Right. On the balance. See. So submental. Let it come in. It come on the other. Submental. Submandibule. Tonsillar nodes. Now I'm going to take off one hand. Why? Otherwise, if you press on both sides, you might press both carotids together and the patient might even collapse. So I'm going along the anterior border of sternocleidal mastoid. Go down. And then the posterior border of sternocleidal mastoid. And the supraclavicular nodes. Same thing on the other side. See, my other hand is on his head. Anterior border of sternocleidal vestal, posterior border of sternocleidal vestal, looking for deep cervical nodes and the supraclavicular nodes. And now the occipital nodes here, which they are palpable, no, they are not palpable. Right. Now that's how you do the examination of the respiratory system anterior. I will also at the same time, I will teach you examination of the respiratory system posterior very quickly. Uh, I hope the patient might tolerate his elderly gentleman. I hope he might extend. So now the second command is examine this patient's respiratory system posterior or from behind. So when you are told like that to examine the respiratory system posterior, uh, you start with the examination from behind first. So first is inspection. So inspection, you will go to go behind and see when the patient got obvious just one deformity that you might not that much appreciate posterior, but particularly you have to see scar marks. Now, if you see a scar mark going like this, that is a new bodectomy scar mark. Smart. Now, Chang, if you can focus on this one. Now, guys, I'm giving you a big clue. I wonder if you can see that. Yeah. Very good. Well done, Chamiko. Yes. Ah, no. What I can see. Oh, with them. Now you might notice. Focus. Yes. Yeah. You might notice that there is a line, white line here. So a good, good and talented student will never miss things like this. Why is this? Now you can see a white colored sort of a plaster mark. And also, Chamiko, if you can focus here. And you might notice in that scar mark, in the plaster mark, in the center, I mean, he's an old man, so very difficult. Here, you might notice that there's another sort of a tiny dot here. So that means they have done a plural aspiration. So, guys, now in the true exam, we bring cases like this. Sometimes the exam just they fail to, you know, we have cleaned this, we have removed the scar, but still. 
there, there may be some, not I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong word. You may be having sort of uh, the plaster marks, plaster mark. So if you see a plaster mark like this, you should be so happy. That means he would have had a procedure and that's why we put a plaster there. So look for those things, never miss those things. So talented students will never miss things like that. Right. So inspection. Right now comes the palpation. See how the Pusmaga we have apart. So my, now look at how I'm going to. So again, upper zone, mid zone, and lower zone. Right. Upper zone, you keep your hands like this and next to it. Look at this. I'll bend down. So this is how you examine the upper zone. Upper zone is like this. And the mid source, making a skin fold. There to Uspaka we have a part. Can you see my hand movers? My left hand and his left chest is moving more, but my right hand and his right chest is moving less. Can you see my left? Can you see my left hand is moving more compared to the, the right hand? Yeah, my left hand is moving more compared to the right hand. Right. Now the lower zones. Again, notice. Movement is more on the left side. Here, this one. This is. The scar side, the plaster side, movement is less. Right. Now, palpation part is done. Then comes the percussion. So, percussion, this is what we are going to do. Again, the roll in the middle finger at this root of the neck. Roll in my middle finger at the root of the neck, like this. You can see that that's a beautiful beam. Roll in the middle finger on the root of the neck. That's a resonant note. And here you can see the same thing. Roll in my middle finger around the root of the neck. That is resonant percussion note. Now I'm going to ask him to cross his shoulders, uh, sorry, cross his hands on the shoulders. See, I'm going to raise the root of the other one. Here, here, here. This is so, you saw that. I got the patient with his hands crossed over the shoulders, like that. So then the scapular blades, they move to either side. The scapular blades, they move to either side. So I can percuss between the scapula. Precedent. 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 Little done. That's it. Right mid zone. Now, right mid zone, you heard that beautiful resonant percussion. Note. Sorry, left, I'm sorry, left mid zone. Resonant percussion. Note. And now the right mid zone. See, it's done. Again, let's compare. So, see the left mid zone. Sorry. Precedent. Resonant. See, that. See, left side also. Top part. Just that. See this again the comparison. Resonant. Stony dull. Stony dull. Stony dull. Story that. Let's listen to that sound again nicely. It's the left chest. See. Resident. Resident. See now. Story that. I think you had a wonderful class today. You beautifully heard the difference of resonance and stone dial percussion note of a right side of pleural effusion. And I'm going to do 99 on this back. See I'm gonna make it. Anu na make it again. You have to do one more thing. You have to do two lateral percussions also like this. Like that. And that also shows stone dial percussion. Anu na make it. Anu na. Aye. 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 Anu na.
So I can see uh, the nice Hello. night lying on this side, Hello. but not on this side. Hello. And Hello. yes, so I will I will get one of uh, my uh, one of my dear students to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Puma is going to do that. Just uh, appreciate this. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. So. Keep it here. How many? So night. Anu nami kya zia? Anu nami. I para? Anu nami. Now keep it here. Anu nami. Kya? Anu nami. So you don't hear that night day through your stethoscope. Only his mom. Kya nami? Anu nami. I para? Anu nami. So that Anu nami is not coming to this. Hari at this year. So that's what we call absence of mobile you know? Right. right. So, uh, because otherwise, uh, you should know that what I am hearing is also heard by the medical students. Right. So, 99 is nicely heard over the left lower chest, but not over the right lower chest. So, that's called absence of vocal resonance. Absence of vocal resonance. So, uh, now posteriorly, I have finished the examination of his chest. Now remember, posterior examination while standing behind, I will do the lymph node examination while standing behind. Before I go to the front of the patient, while standing behind, I will check the submantle, submandibule, tonsilla, then anterior border, anterior border of sternocleidomastoid, posterior border of sternocleidomastoid, supraclavicular. Then this side also I will do the anterior border, posterior border, supraclavicular. Same way I do in the anterior examination. Now I am going to come to the front. Uh, dear students, I, I forgot one step earlier because he became with this thing that time. That is the examination of position of trachea. When the patient is in seated position, you have to. Uh, so once the patient is in seated position, you have to examine for position of trachea also. Earlier I forgot that because he became a bit restless that time, so that's why. Now I will show you how to examine for position of trachea. Uh, I think we'll have a very close view. Uh, yes. Now you can notice in this gentleman who will be here. Now these are the two clavicles. These are two clavicles. These are the two medial lids of the clavicles. These are the two medial lids of the clavicles which get attached to the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Now, if you put your finger here, that is called the suprasternal notch. All of you all have that. You can notice that this supra this is the suprasternal notch. And then the sternocleidomastoid muscles are on either side. This is this side sternocleidomastoid, and this is the other side sternocleidomastoid. And this is the suprasternal notch. And these are the two medial ends of the clavicle. Medial ends of this is one medial end of clavicle. This is the other medial end of clavicle. And this is the suprasternal notch. Right. So there are two methods of examining position of trachea. So you take your uh, so your right hand, you take three fingers like this. So one medial end of clavicle, your index finger will sit on that. Your ring finger will sit on one medial end of the clavicle, and the middle finger will go from top to bottom, palpating the position of trachea. That is one. Now look here. Watch here. Medial end of clavicle, index finger. The other medial end of clavicle, ring finger, like this. And now middle finger is going to drag along the position of trachea like this. And I came to the suprasternal notch from here like this. And now I'm going to put my finger between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid like this. Can you see a space? There's a space between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to put my finger now and see the space here. Then also I'm going to put my finger between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid on this side. Can you see that there's a space here? Yeah. Can you see this? Yes. So I'm going to put my finger here also. 
So the gap between this area, trachea and sternocleidomastoid, and the gap between this trachea and sternocleidomastoid should be same. Then only we say trachea is central. But if this gap is more, and if this gap is less, that means trachea is pushed to the space, uh, the area where the space is less. Right? So that's how you look for the position of trachea. If you, are if you find it difficult, you can just use your index finger. You can just use your index finger uh, like this. And that one, you can just drag like this. Look at this. I think this is easy for you. Just drag it like this to the suprasternal notch. And then put it on this side. And also put it on this side. Put it on this side. And put it on this side. And see whether there's a tracheal division. That's all. That's all. So now we have examined the position of trachea. And now I'm completing the uh, general examination from uh, uh, like from the front. So again, general appearance when he's wasted. Conjunctival fellow, like the same way I did before. Then look for uh, cyanosis and polycythemia in his mouth. Then the hand examination while he's in seated position. Look for clubbing like this. Look for any uh, one more thing with this task. See, I call it a great view with it. There it is. How did you see here? Actually, task in, you have to see here. But he hasn't got any task in. So, task in, you will see on the index finger, but he hasn't got any task in. Then, the cigarette smokers, they have the task in yellow color state but it's not there then i will uh, palpate this wrist with this hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy uh, and also i will ask him to keep his hands like this looking for flapping tremors and finally i will go to his feet and look for fitting ankle in. so that concludes examination of this gentleman's respiratory system posterior Thank you.